Over 40 years of recreational fishing, chasing New Zealand snapper, teaches one a lot. There's been a few questions on rigs and tackle, so this bid will answer them while taking you along on some fishing adventures. Big things lurk close to New Zealand shoreline, so targeting snapper from the rocks is a logical thing to do. A big part of this is learning to do it for yourself. Sharing is caring. So here we go. Anthony's grabbing the big fish in. Down the car mandal. Down the car mandal. 2012. Thinks it's a big one. Sure looks like. Right. Here he goes. Oh yeah, up here. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a big one. That's a good one, mate. Hold still, Anthony. Here we I'll have it. Start things off with my latest invention. I'm recycling an old surf casting rod and making a burly thrower. What to do with an old rod? Most people will just chuck this into the corner of their garage. It'd sit there for 10 to 15 years before their missus threw it out in the skip bin. Cut all these eyes off. Use them as spare parts. The Mutsu hook is my favourite, a circle hook. Snelling on a circle hook is very important for the style of fishing I practice. Here I'm demonstrating some basic and more advanced snelling techniques with an oversized hook and some braided cord. I don't use this knot a lot unless I'm attaching a line to a trace that already has something else attached to the other end such as a swivel or joined on directly to the main line. There's some much better demonstration videos on YouTube if you want to check this knot out better. But this is predominantly the knot that I do use to snail my line onto the circle hooks. It's the long line knot. I don't know of any other name given to it. I commercially long line for several years and this is the knot that we always use and it works. I particularly like it because when recycling your traces you can easily undo this knot while with the traditional snood you will have to run knife or scissors down the shaft of the hook. Just remember that with any snail knot it's really important to have the line coming out through the eye above the point in the hook. Two main traces that I use for targeting snapper from the shore. A two hook rig with no sinker for big baits. And a single hook rig with a breaker in between and a sinker sitting on top attached to a swivel. Once again, 80 pound mono. I pre-tie all my traces and I keep them individually in sandwich bags because they're low cost, easy to see what's inside each one and you can use them over and over again. This is a classic New Zealand big snapper trace. A lot of celebrity fishos have taught us this rig over the years but there is a flaw with it and I'm going to show you what that is. I'll also show you the DMA knot solution. If you follow the line up, you'll see that the, when the pressure comes on the tag end, the main line is actually cutting directly through it, reducing the overall strength of your leader to 50% of its actual line rating. 
the traditional snood knot is no better. The line gets cut off at the bottom of the knot. And all you get is this. And you've all seen that before. So this is my own personal solution to that problem. I call it the DMA knot, the Dark Moon Angler knot. And as you can see, I just put a bunch of binds onto the shaft before I lay the tail end down. And then I carry on the knot as normal. Now the main line is resting against four or five wraps of line instead of trying to cut through a single wrap of line. This knot has never failed me. Unfortunately the same innovation does not work with the traditional snail knot as it still gets cut off at the bottom of the knot. With the two hook rig, I always put one hook into the gut cavity and one through the hard part of the mouth. This enables you to cast the bait. The snapper will always hit the gut cavity first. Big snap. And the kingfish will always take the head first. And that's why the hook in those places. Just hooked up. You're real careful. <sighs> nice sixty. Hang on, sixty three again. Nice sixty three centimeter snapper, Mucha. Let him go. About 10 pounds, I'd say. Just trying a different spot. Awesome ledges all along here. Snapper rock. Spot on the side of the road. The ledge. The groove. The gut. Again, it's <laughs> nice. It's the old bend in the rod again. A lot of tension. Pretty much time to go time. Quite time been and gone. Collected the hollow crabs for bait for tomorrow. 
the first squid. <laughs> oh. Never caught one before. I just heard the weirdest noise up in there. I don't know what it was. Freaking me out. It sounded like a seal. Keen to get out of here now. Alright, testing out my little burly thrower. I've, adjust, I've adjusted the spoon to about that angle with a few rocks I had to practice with. So now I'm going to the tortured cubes. Well, that was shit. Okay. More of an angle. All right, well that was too bad. I think maybe a bit of rubber grip in this so they don't slip out so easy. Oh yeah, that's almost to the edge of the cow pine. I think I've got the right angle on the spoon now. Oh, that was just about right on the edge of the cow line. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice snapper. Nice snapper for my little bait setup. Cheers. Think of your fishing line as an old tree hut to tree hut telephone line. If you can feel the vibrations, so can the fish, and the fish are a whole lot more sensitive than we are. So I find with a big circle hook, I just leave the rod on the rocks, have the drag just set a lot enough for the fish to run hard, but enough for the for it to turn the circle hook, and that's about all you need. And uh, let the rod do the work. The rod will act like a big spring on the circle hook and basically the fish can't really get off as long as it doesn't run all the line out, you're right. So this way I can fish multiple rods, sit right back and yada yada yada. I catch a lot of my big snapper like this. So sit back and have a beer. He just hammered that. Thought he was a lot bigger than that. He just took off. So this is the best thing about circle hooks. I can sit here with my feet up. I've got three rods out. They've all got circle hooks on. A single circle hook with a bull sinker on top. And the bull sinker weight will varies between one and two ounces today. If it was a lot windier on shore, I'd have three ounce sinkers but nothing else. And the only reason I'd only fish with one hook is because when you do hook a big snapper, they tend to swim through the kelp. And if you have a second hook trailing about, they always get fouled. It's 
Fresh bait's always best. Live's even better. The best thing about it is if you don't use it, you can let them go. Little seal pup on the point, having a snooze. Just took the nice little snapper on my little bait rod. Ooh. Little, little. It's a single circle hook, so I've got no worries about getting snagged on anything. If he swims into the cow, I can't pull him out. Because the line's too light. This is a 12 pound mono. This is a nice fish. Oh no, you just got me. Oh yes, go, 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 go. go. Oh, nice fish for the light gear. You look at that. Oh, that one's frayed too. A good four or five pound snapper. When you're out on a mission, taking a good break from the fishing and checking out what else your environment has to offer can often make a big difference in your fishing mojo karma, luck, or whatever else you like to call it. You can reset your attitude, rejuvenate your energy levels, and just give the time to rethink your strategies. I just want to say a big thanks for all the subscribers, that's friggin' awesome, love it, love all the comments and likes and whatnot, bring my, give me more motivation to keep doing what I'm doing, so thanks for that, most appreciated. Another thing you can do is collect scrap metal, or buy it from a scrap metaller and make your own sinkers. This is a cost effective way of doing things. I've been doing it for years. Collected a lot of scrap from building yards and I've melted it down into dive weights for storage. And every now and again I melt a few of these down and make myself a whole lot of sinkers. It's easy to do. Lead melts just below 330 degrees Celsius. There are two things to remember. First, lead is highly poisonous, the fumes are noxious and you should probably wear gloves. Secondly, the molten state will practically explode on contact with water. You have been warned. There's a ton of videos on YouTube on how to do this. It just saves on money in the long run because rock fishing can be quite expensive on the gear after a while. Worst eating fish in the ocean, silver drummer. Don't know what they're like for bait, but I need bait. <laughs> and it's fresh. Another one. Quite hard little fighters. So 
silver drummer quite a girthy little fish quite fat quite powerful little tail actually fight quite hard but they're considered one of the worst eating fish in the ocean That was the end of that Coromandel trip, but this is applying my methods and techniques to another unfamiliar area to me. It was a full moon, and I've been here once before. I knew there wasn't the Eclonia radiata forest big snapper habitat here, but instead an intertidal zone abundant in oysters, fringed by Carpophyllum weed zones before it dropped off into channels of mud and broken shell. There's a lot of boat traffic in this area, so an early stealthy approach is I'm stray lining big hole frozen yellow eyed mullet with two circle hooks. Frozen yellow eyed mullet, this one's a single circle hook with a two ounce on top. Classic big snapper bait for me. In a situation like this, I will often forgo a leader altogether and just tie the gear directly onto the main line with no weight. It's a risk, but on a day like today, it can be all the difference between an inquisitive touch being just that to an inquisitive touch leading to a strike hookup. Another good tactic is live bait. Just like a soft plastic, a little small live bait can trigger an angry response from a big snapper even on the most quietest of days. This is my standard go-to trace. Two ounce sinker sitting on top of a single circle hook. I'm going to put a live bait on this time. This is a yellow eyed mullet. I'll try to get the curve going uphill just in front of the eye. Coming out just in front of the eye, so the eyes stay on. You generally cast these up about 80% of what you'd normally cast a normal bait. Nothing special happened on this trip, but I did manage a couple of respectable snapper for an otherwise difficult day. That's the end of the Snapper Secrets vid. Hope you've all learnt something. My best advice is talk to the locals. They can sometimes be a bit tight-lipped, but uh, a few beers normally lubricates a fisho's mouth quite well. <laughs>